car or the, the white car was Cecil Williams, uh, the driver of the car. He was deported. Uh, he ended up in Glasgow and became a friend of my parents. And I suppose that's when I got introduced to the crime of against humanity that apartheid was. And, and younger listeners, maybe people even below the age of 35, may, weren't, weren't necessarily familiar with just how wacky and unpleasant the, the, the regime was. And they had laws that you couldn't drink and eat in the same restaurants. Which they, they had all kinds, you weren't allowed to kiss somebody from a different race. You certainly couldn't marry them who's the same. So, indeed, uh, and uh, only Africans, black Africans, are Italian pastors. And if you were caught out of pastor, uh, you maybe had forgotten it. Uh, then you would be arrested. You could spend 90 days in prison without trial. And then quite often, uh, as you were released, you were re-arrested. So you could spend months or perhaps years in prison for simply for getting this credit password. Incidentally, Nelson Mandela uh, was the volunteer in chief in the defiance campaign, which was uh, against the past laws and past groups, uh, which they found uh, the past groups. Uh, and it was after that, uh, uh, as part of that campaign, that the massacre at Sharpeville happened, and that's when ANC decided that 50 years of peaceful struggle uh, had got them uh, not very far, and they decided then to take off the hands of struggle and then to get the command of the of the army. Stephen Grudge has mentioned Henry Perverse Widow, and that I'd actually just slipped my mind that I wanted to mention that now, because, of course, Henry Perverse was one of the absolute hardline apartheid Prime Ministers of South Africa, Presidents of South Africa, and um, and and died, and you, you couldn't believe that Nelson Mandela, with all everything else that was going on, chose to fly to, I think, a very remote place to, to have this very public reconciliatory cup of tea with with his widow. Yes, yeah, so I mean, before the other struggle, of course, uh, as I've said, uh, Nelson Mandela and the African National Congress have tried every peaceful means uh, to seek justice. Uh, and uh, the, the white supremacist racist regime uh, wouldn't give. Uh, but uh, Nelson Mandela always, from the beginning, uh, was uh, for negotiations, was for peace. And so he didn't change. Uh, the methods in terms of fighting a country change, but he always was for all South Africans living together peacefully. That is why uh, he could do this uh, and go and talk to the widow of Bernard, who incidentally had said that uh, we don't want to be Africans looking over a wall and seeing a green field that they may think they should be able to play in. Uh, so that's why we're fantasized. Uh, so that's how bad Bernard was. Tell us about meeting him. I, we just had a, a tweet from somebody who says that, that Glasgow rather cleverly changed the address of the South African consulate to Nel Nelson Mandela Square during apartheid to uh, to annoy them. But uh, well, that's right. Uh, uh, well, uh, Glasgow was the first city in the world to give the name of the city to Nelson Mandela in 1981. While he was still in prison, uh, yeah, that was a wonderful day. The vice president of uh, Nigeria. Received the award on his behalf and spoke at the uh, anti apartheid meeting which I chair. Then later, uh, the city uh, renamed uh, the street Nelson Mandela Place. The South African consulate was on the fifth floor of the stock exchange. So it was rather apt because, of course, big business supported the apartheid regime because it made ma ma massive profits out of the cheap, uh, exploited black labour. And uh, so that was very apt. Uh, but of course, the consulate didn't want to use the address Nelson Mandela Place, uh, so they used a post office box instead. Uh, but uh, the, the last lap of it was, was announced because it gave us a focus for pickets and also when they looked out of any window from the uh, uh, rooms on the fifth floor, they couldn't help but see the street named Nelson Mandela Place. Thank you very much, Brian Filling, honorary consul for South Africa and Scotland, lifelong campaigner against the party. 20 past one, BBC Radio 2. Good afternoon. Don't you know, talking about the rivers of the ocean sounds. Don't you know, talking about the rivers of the ocean sounds.
Tracy Chapman uh, talking about a revolution. And on Tuesday nights, you can hear a tribute to Nelson Mandela here on BBC Radio 2, by the way. Looking back at his life and legacy, and in particular at the work of his four treble six, four campaign, that's his up prison number, which changes the lives of countless African Africans affected by HIV and AIDS.